her second season uh, and thrilled to do it. Uh, this is just a little appetizer. I mean, this is just a small little seven-game card to get the uh, season started. Wait till next Monday and every Monday after that when we'll have weeknight games to break down. We'll have, you know, a bigger Saturday slate. and We'll handpick a bunch of games from the Saturday slate to uh, analyze here on the Monday early look-ahead show hitting the books. So uh, lots of great uh, content ahead. And not only our show, but the, the entire football schedule that we've put together here at Pub Sports Radio. It's phenomenal. You know, preview shows like this, previewing all the games, live betting shows. You know, the UFC live show streams shows are still going to continue. The horse racing streams, Cash at Fridays, you name it. Uh, well, live betting for Sunday night football, Thursday night football, Monday night football, NFL. Uh, Dabby Cab with a Saturday afternoon college football live betting show right after our Saturday Pub Hub show in the morning with uh, that we're starting again this Saturday with me, Connor Mack, DJ Big Boss, and Big Ragu. I mean, we are going to have you covered, seriously, uh, here at Pub Sports Radio throughout the uh, football season, the fall and the winter months. So uh, make sure you tune in to all the great content that we're going to have here uh, on the channel. All right, Nevada, New Mexico State next up. And this game has seen plenty of line movement. When these lines came out in the spring, Nevada was a 14.5-point road favorite in this game. They are now just 9-point road favorites here, 50.5 being the total. There is no team in college football, not one, that has as more upheaval and just absolutely rebuild written all over it than Nevada. I mean, they pretty much lose everything and everyone from last year. Jay Norvell, head coach, gone. His staff, gone. The best quarterback Nevada's had since Colin Kaepernick in Carson Strong, gone. Most of the offense and the skill position talent, gone. Romeo yeah. Dobbs, you remember how great he was uh, for Nevada yeah. last year. And look at, he's already making plays in the preseason uh, right now in the NFL. Uh, the O-line is totally rebuilt. The defensive line is totally rebuilt. In fact, there's only two starters on the entire defense back uh, this year uh, for Nevada. Uh, a totally brand new coaching staff, new schemes, new coordinators, new systems, both sides of the football. I mean, this is probably the biggest you know, upheaval from one season to the next as any team uh, in college football, and they're unsettled at the quarterback spot, which tells you, you know, how good are these two guys playing in camp when uh, the new head coach here is undecided on who his quarterback's going to be. Nate Cox and uh, Oklahoma State transfer Shane Illingworth are, are battling for that uh, quarterback job right now uh, for the uh, Nevada Wolfpack. But either way, you're talking about a team that in the Norvell era was very good. They've had two really good seasons in a row, and you're just basically now starting from scratch. And there's a reason why the betting markets have taken a stance and all the money is poured in against Nevada here for this game. The question is, is there still value left? Uh, and I think there is, because I think when you look at New Mexico State, Jerry Kill taking over a veteran head coach, uh, you know, we know he's always had a ton of health issues. He's been in and out of the hospital for various heart ailments and heart conditions. And yet here he is because he, I think he loves his job so much and doing it and helping, you know, college kids. Uh, grow in the game of football. That's what he said, when, why, which is why he took this job. He believes he can turn New Mexico State into a respectable program again. These are words that he s said specifically after he got hired. And you look at New Mexico State last year. Yeah, is it a bottom five, bottom 10 team in the country? Yeah, but you know there were also times they were competitive. There were times the offense uh, was better than people thought. The defense was the main issue. But I think Kill, we've seen his team's always improve on defense everywhere he's mm -hmm. been you know he's had teams that maybe started out being pretty bad on defense pretty weak and he's gotten them to improve as time goes on I, I wouldn't rule him out getting this defense this year to be improved a little bit we know they had trouble on that side of the football last year but I wouldn't rule out uh, any sort of uh, improvement here from the defense and I think the offense is going to be capable I mean even last year Jonah Johnson who of course went into the transfer portal he's not there anymore he was a serviceable solid quarterback and they're very high on this uh, quarterback that might end up winning the starting job it's a battle between Weston Eget who actually got some playing time last year for New Mexico State, and the young freshman, uh, Diego Pavia, uh, who is uh, battling right now uh, for the uh, starting uh, quarterback spot. Uh, and the freshman right now has the inside track. Last uh, articles I read from Las Cruces saying that there's probably a solid chance that New Mexico State you know, goes with Pavia here. Uh, in this uh, first start. And, you know, he's a guy that's got a decent arm. He's from the state, you know, local kid. 
Uh, it could be a nice little fit here early in the season. Like I said, with Nevada's defense, it's completely rebuilt. So I do like the Aggies here. Um, there is still a question, you know, is this team ready to close the gap significantly enough on Nevada now to not only compete yeah. but win the game outright? I don't know, but I'll tell you this right now. I have no issues fading Nevada here in their very first game of the season. You don't have the kind of, you know, just dismantling of the roster dis on both sides of the football, the kind of dismantling of the coaching staff from last year to this year and expect them to be fluid and expect them to play at a high level in the first game of the next season. I just don't, I think it's totally unreasonable to expect that. And the fact that they're so undecided at the quarterback spot also tells you there, there's going to be some growing pains. There's going to be some problems uh, here in the first few weeks of the season, if not longer uh, for the Nevada Wolfpack this year. So even with the number not being as good, I'm more than content to recommend New Mexico State here, plus the points. I think we've got a close game, worst-case scenario. You want to know what Nevada might look like this year with all of these new faces, both sides of the ball, new coaches, new schemes. Look at how when everybody sat in the bowl game last year for them and look at how they played. They got destroyed uh, in that game. There's going to be some tough, tough uh, growing pains to begin the 2022 college football season, in my opinion, for the Nevada Wolfpack. Connor Mack, what do you think here? Yeah, you mentioned earlier about production. Uh, you know, you and our least production bringing back in all of college football, and they're just not very That's good. That's one thirty-one out of one thirty-one. Yeah. Yes. Returning Ed production. Last, yeah. Bringing it back. <laughs> Carson Strong. Just everyone. Norvell's out. All those receivers, tight ends gone. Defensive side of the ball too. Even though there's a little bit, you know, coming back on the defense. In the end, I'm with you. You know, right away, I like the points here, and I, I really like the under. Problem is, when these teams get together, they've like eight no to the over the last when they get together. And can they change New Mexico State? Can this team? So many, they I think they're going to be better defensively, and they played at times at the end of the year, but they still gave up a ton of points, especially early on in the year, and weren't very good. We know Jerry Kill likes to run it, slow down the clock. So this total's interesting to me. I, I want I lean to the under. Um, but it's just a lean. The more I dig into this game as I have all week, it's kind of like I've gone back and forth. Uh, so in my mind, I lean to the under here and to New Mexico state, but are they ready now? It's, you know, it's down to nine, eight and a half. Uh, you know, can they just run the clock and keep this close? Uh, someone in the chat say you went to New Mexico, state, Johnny guns. Yeah. It's just still the, the disparity in talent, you know, in the recruiting, even though they've just ripped everything apart. You know, at, at UNR, um, they still are probably better than New Mexico State, but I'd grab the points here. You know, I am, and, I, and I'd lean under if I were on the total. Yeah, look, the, re the recruitment is not there yet. Uh, it probably may never be because this is New Mexico State. We do it have is, to remember yeah. that. It may never be there. Like UNLV. Recruiting. Yeah. But somehow, some way, Jerry Kill was able, at least in the secondary, to get a Michigan transfer in there. That was shocking. I couldn't believe my eyes when I read that. One of the transfers yeah. he got in the portal was from Michigan for the defense. I'm like, wow, I, I don't care who it is. You're doing something. When you're getting someone from Michigan to come to Las Cruces, New Mexico, I mean, you, you're doing something right. Yeah, but he might have, kid might have had a little bit of an issue too. Yeah. I mean, why is he leaving Michigan to go to Las Cruces? But yeah, I get what True. you're saying. And the question is the one thing about Jerry is, you know, uh, he's keeping the kids on the straight and narrow has been able to do that. So that could be the uh, concern with that one player that, uh, that he specifically that he brought in from Michigan. But like I said, I think the, the I, I like the fit, you know, again, we're, this is, this to me is more like, is New Mexico state going to have some games where they get throttled this year, especially when they play good teams? Of course, you know, they're going to have some really rough games, but we're talking about them on their home field against a, a program and a team that's basically starting from scratch this year. We're just asking them to stay within single digits. All right. That's all we're asking. Yeah. And I think they're capable of doing that. And that's where they got help because they got torched was the secondary. And that's yeah. where you're talking about Selden from Michigan. They got Miller from Maryland. They to sure up, you know, those corners and safeties. Cause yeah, they were not very good. Gave over well over 300 yards uh, passing last year. So that's a little upside. So I want to see, man, this week zero is so interesting how they how they'll match up at home and how they'll play, especially on the defense side. Because offensively, they're not going to do much. They're going to run it. I don't know how great that'll be. So 